Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and we got our co-host h and trader Hal in the house tonight. What's going on Hal? Not much. It was a little bit choppy, especially in the, in the uh, stocks that I was looking at, but overall, I mean, I got moves that just did not uh, execute the way that I needed to, so. All right, well, let's, let's dive into it. It's time for the last rip where we take a look at top gainers on the day, recap any trades we took, and look for some trades for the next day. Time is our most valuable asset, so let's not waste any more of it and jump into the DIA or the SPY. But we're starting to look at the DIA now because it's better. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see it sell off at market open today and then mm -hmm. pump back up the rest of the day, actually hitting a new high of a uh, year there, 355.60. Uh, looks pretty mm -hmm. bullish. Yep. It uh, looks like it's going to continue to pump. Maybe tomorrow a little pullback because it's Friday, but I would say next week we'll see it continue to move. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, with that bounce off of that, what looks like the 200 moving average, uh, the orange line you got there, looks like it uh, found a little flat top and broke it. <laughs> yeah. So what did you end up trading today, man? Well, I traded a few things, but not too much. Uh I did have that AHPI swing, which worked out really nicely as it made some big moves uh, right there at market open. Mm, did you and, lock that in? You did lock it in, right? Yeah, I didn't lock it in at the top. Uh, oh. I, got, I put a stop loss in because I was wanting to see if it was going to hold, and the stop was down at like uh, 14. I had it under 15. Right there, this consolidation, it just mm -hmm. hit my stop loss there, but $42 profit. You know, it could have been more, but I'm happy with that. I'll take the less profit for the potential of this continuing to rip. I jumped in FLGC early because it looked like it was going to break this triangle on the daily. It mm -hmm. threw. A, it was looking real good, so I got in there at 1320, and it shot up on this candle to 14, and I was like, oh, yeah, we're going. And then fake out, break out, dumping. Now it's below that triangle, so probably will dump down uh, to this $10 area. Mm -hmm. Well, it only took a eleven dollar and eighty cent loss. So first thing I traded was XBIO. Oh, I traded XBI to XBIO too. Yeah, it just it it really it looked like it was gonna go, but then I you know a lot of times I end up looking at these stocks, getting into them, and then researching. I'm like, oh, that's why I dropped. Oh, so it, it had a shelf registration on it. And, you know, I was like, shelf registration just makes stocks move weird. Yeah. So, you know, it didn't get, once I started seeing it not breaking out of those highs like it should be, especially being a low flow, I was like, why is this happening? And then I went and read and I was like, oh, that's why. So, yeah, where'd, where'd you get in at on it? I got in right there, 100 shares. Um, and it went up a little bit on that green candle. And as soon as I saw too much red on that next candle, I went ahead and dumped. I didn't even care about it going up. It should have went. It should have at least pressed the highs a little bit more than that. So I went ahead and dumped it out. It did go up a little higher as a bull trap. And yeah. then you see the trap, the trap complete. I, oh, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't catch that. I got in 50 shares at 409 on this first candle when it started pushing over. This is the, mm -hmm. the the new strategy. You can see as soon as that crossed over, the gray, the 10 adapter crossed over that purple line, I jumped mm -hmm. in there. And I held it all the way through up to this, and I thought it was going to break that 450 and go because it had just broke out of this triangle in pre-market. Mm -hmm. It was a nice little triangle there and had a little pop. I put my stop loss under four, 10 cents under four. Mm -hmm. So I lost uh, 339 or something like that. Yeah, not much. Oh, I had 10 shares of this that I had bought uh, yesterday, I think, too. Because you can see mm -hmm. I, did, I bought 50 there, and then 60 is what I sold. So somewhere I bought, let's see if it shows it anywhere, right there. So that's actually two days ago. I bought 10 at 412. Man, you got to stop forgetting about these stocks, bro. <laughs> you, you're going to wake up with a hole in your account. Uh, the other one was ACY. That one really just took the wind out of me. I was like, you know what? I'm done. So I saw it going up, and I really, really should have followed my rules where I, I look for confirmation of at least some kind of bottom to form. Mm -hmm. I didn't really follow that, so I started trading it on some of these green candles in here on the way up. 
Um, yeah, up in the middle right there. And I was making some pretty decent, uh, like 40 cent rips and stuff like that. But then we got to the top and we got to the first pullback here. And I was like, okay, do I want to hold through this? Uh, or because when I looked at my, my, how big the spreads were, I was like, I really don't want to be holding on a red candle because I don't know how low, how far it can drop. So on the first drop, I think I lost like 23 cents or something like that. And I was like, I'm going to get out and I'm going to wait. And so it really has like, it had low volume. So it wasn't really kind of fluid motion. It was kind of like yeah. popping. So I was like, all right, I'm going to wait a little bit. And so on this next green candle beside that red candle, I was like, all right, well, it's looking like it's going to go. So I jumped back in there for for a pump over that, that uh, red candle. And yeah. I added, I added going oh. up, um, uh, what, a couple of times, but this was a more expensive stock. So I think I had like maybe 15 shares, but it's that 15 shares, uh, it was going up, going up. And then on the next candle, it was, it just opened lower. And I was, I was like, oh boy, yeah. it's about to go down, but it jumped back up. So I was kind of like, all right, well, I may be okay. And then it, it kind of dumped, but didn't fully dump. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm down 99 cents on these 15 shares. So that's 15 bucks automatically. And so I just got out. I was like, you know what? This thing could drop another $3. And so I'm glad that I did get out. It took it a while, but it looks like it did go down about $3. Yeah, it was a uh, pretty pretty decent drop there. Yeah. I got in on this third green candle. At that point... Um, on this candle, as you can see, the volume was only like 200,000 right there on those, like 400,000 all together mm -hmm. uh, to start the day off on these first three candles. And there was a dollar something spread, so I actually had to limit in to try to get this price I wanted to that because it was jumping between 2750 and 2880 and it was just smart, insane. Smart. So I, yeah, so I just tried to limit in there, and I actually got filled right away. I was actually shocked that I actually got filled where I wanted. And then uh, it climbed all the way up. That I had that same thought that this was going to break, and uh, it, you know it was, it was doing good there. It was consolidating good. It was holding above the adaptive, and just just had that little dump there. So I put a stop loss right here under these two lines, these two candle wicks, yeah. this one there, and this one there. So that way I locked in profit regardless. So I didn't care. I was like, yeah, I'm going to lock in profit either way. So if yeah. it drops, it drops. And that ended up being a $55 win. Nice. The The problem with it on my part was where I was getting in. One, there wasn't enough time to be putting in a stop loss. Yeah. And then the other thing is the spread. It, it Like you said, you saw it with a dollar spread almost. Yeah. Oh, and I was yeah. seeing 40 cent spreads. So to put a stop loss in means that I would have to accept a 40 cent loss on it. Yeah. So, and then the other thing with stocks like this that are low volume, they can jump your stops. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You, know, you, you may not get filled and all of a sudden you're down and you're like, what happened? And yeah. your stop didn't get hit. Yeah, that can happen. And it did continue to run. That This was the rip I was looking for. I was holding through this looking for it to pop up to 35. That was, that was my <laughs> price target. Uh, and it just it did after that little dump. We'll see how to do the rest of the day. Oh, now it's back down to thirty. Did close over thirty, so still could be one to keep on watch because it still didn't get that much volume today. It only got ten million in volume. Yeah, well, it, it got more. It got more at the start of the day than yesterday because I guess people mm -hmm. were already watching it. Um, mm -hmm. The other day, it, it had barely got over like six hundred thousand at the beginning of the day but been repeating this same pattern forever if you look at the uh yesterday's chart the same exact pattern that little dip and yeah. then rip dip then rip yeah. i mean it's the same pattern so the the bad thing about this stock is it will make you impatient you don't yeah. wait for that pattern you're like oh it's just continue but it doesn't it does that pattern and goes so you know one of those impatient a, FOMO buys. I was like, oh man, if this thing rips, I can get three dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well I mean that's true. I mean that's that's what I got was basically three dollars a share on it. Yep. Um but it is on a bit of a trend line because that bounced there now and now today, I mean the way it looks at after hours, after hours it didn't have any volume at all. So this trend line could easily still hold up. It just have to open up in pre market. 
uh, over mm-hmm. 32. But if it can hold above that, if it's, you know, market open, if this thing is around 32, 33, it could get another push to try to test that 35. Mm-hmm. But if this trend line cracks and it drops under 30, not touching it. <laughs> yeah. Did you trade anything else? No, man. I burned all my capital on um, ACY. I entered, I, I entered multiple times on this one. So it was like, I think I was doing $150 per position. So it burned through some capital quick yeah. with oh, multiple yeah. entries. Oh, yeah. Well, the only other trade I took was NAOV. And this was a little later in the day. And I got in at the top here. I mm. didn't see I didn't see it running that much or all that all mm. that run, but it mm-hmm. broke over. I was noticing looking at it uh, on the daily chart that it was right at this three dollar area, mm-hmm. and if it could break that three dollar area, it would continue to rip. So it did break over three dollars. When I saw it break over three dollars, I bought at three dollars looking for the break, and it did pop up to three twenty five. And then mm-hmm. it just shot right back down. So I, I had a stop loss at two ninety four because it was fifty shares. So I just took a three dollar loss on that one. It was about a I had like a five six cent stop loss. <laughs> mm. But yeah, that could have been some profit. But I thought it was going to run some more, getting held up there. It'll probably yeah. the way this looks, it's probably got a little bit longer to consolidate before it actually does make a move. Yeah. It's yeah, it's not exactly a. Uh, I was I looked at it after market. It didn't pop up on my scanner because it's not exactly a low float according to my yeah. <laughs> criteria. But it is gonna be you know it can creep up, but it does. That's another one that had a, a shelf registration. No, so you gotta oh, okay. yeah you gotta make sure. And a lot of times that's what I'm saying. I get into these and then I research and it's like oh my goodness this is why it's trading like this. So, yeah, it had a shelf registration. And I think another one today that was moving was PB. Oh, yeah, PBTS. Uh, it had a shelf yeah. registration. So, oh, see, mm-hmm. I didn't know that, but I saw that strong resistance at the 200 day. Mm-hmm. And uh, some people were asking about it. And I was like, yeah. it's got to break 215, 220, yeah. and 225. Like, that's just yeah. so much resistance right there. And it yeah. could, it, like, it's tried to break 220 a couple of times, but just dump it mm-hmm. back down. Yep, it, because people are unsure. With a shelf registration, they can enact that thing at any time. So, you know, that drop can come wherever a drop comes. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not that adept on the shelf registration, so you're teaching me about that. I, oh, I yeah. I appreciate yeah. that because that, it does seem to affect these stocks quite a bit. TBT did bounce off the 10-day. It held up the mm-hmm. 10 day. So having a green day after all that selling, you know, shorter is probably locking in. Uh oh. Ben's going in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what we'll see what happens with Bitcoin and, and Ethereum overnight tonight and other cryptos, but it does look g- good for a possible move tomorrow if the cryptos are up in the morning. Uh, all right. But I'm not gonna just jump in it tomorrow. I'm gonna wait and see okay. if it's gonna if I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna wait. Seriously, I'm gonna wait because I want to see if it holds above this candle. If it drops below the body of this candle, then I know it's not gonna be worth trading. That's at thirteen seventy. So, well, but if it starts pushing up, and we're getting some nice like a little U shape or something up to fifteen, mm-hmm. then I might grab it. You know, right there at fifteen for maybe a little push up to sixteen or something. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. We'll see what tomorrow brings. I, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> what was Bitcoin doing today? I didn't even look at any of that. Uh, They were having a pullback. All the cryptos are having a pullback, but they have uh, started rebounding the night pretty much back to where they were. Let's see. Bitcoin's at 40... 44,000. Yeah, 44,000. Uh, almost 45,000. Two hundred dollars yep. away from forty-five thousand, so you bounced off that fifty-day, which I predicted on the Framework Fortune Crypto channel. If you're a crypto trader, go check that out. Uh, shameless self plug. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out, holler at the you know the small little baby channel over there. And I'm coming in tomorrow, still sticking to the low floats. This time I'm gonna stick to my price range. That's it. 
All right, very nice. So I'm going to try to stick to my trading plan as well. We'll see what happens. We'll convene again in the morning at 8 a.m. Central to talk out our war strategies of how we're going to take on the day. Appreciate everybody joining us as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.